Secret's going to play in the opening game of their match here in the quarterfinals. We will be pulling that up right here. Band's already going down on both sides. So Fnatic and Secret Fnatic on the dire side also having that first pick. We saw VP go with a different strategy, which is banning the Bloodseeker, just because it's been such a wild card mm -hmm. uh, for them. It, it was running the support role, it was played by RTZ with an unusual blink into Mjolnir build, and it seems, I mean, Fnatic might pick it themselves. This is actually very popular <laughs> in the SEA region. We were talking about this in the seeding stage. If the reason they picked Bloodseeker was just to sort of throw people off going into the main stage of the tournament. Like Pugna? <laughs> no, no, like if, if, you pick, if you pick the Bloodseeker repeatedly on, 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 on day one, even though you don't re really feel like it's, it's a main priority in your arsenal, then you can sort of scare teams into using a ban on it. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a very legitimate strategy. We've seen it before. Uh, I mean, all throughout, even in just traditional sports and things like that, you use a certain strategy all throughout. And look at this, picks going down really quickly on oh both sides. Goodness. Well, so I, I really, first of all, I really like uh, the first the first pick, Leshrac, out of Fnatic. Uh, we've talked about Leshrac and Overtime's here already at the panel. I think if there's if there's one team that I actually like to see seriously think about incorporating and support Leshrac, it is Fnatic. Uh, I really like Ketchikimba already holds several uh, significant farming records in his young career, and I think this is a very, very strong farming support. And of course, for Secret, I mean, we saw what Zai could do with clockwork at the Summit 3. He had, he had the finest clockwork game that I've ever seen uh, through 12 hook shots hit all of them in a pivotal game against Fiji Gaming. <laughs> I do think, though, this is a more common opening here by Secret. By Secret, yeah. This is very conventional. It, it can still be yeah. a short lane quad where you have an off lane clockwork, then potentially going to something like a Chen, even. They can also transition in a drop visage. Yeah. They're still very open, but I do agree with Jacob here, where you were mentioning the, the Bloodseeker. I think it's more of a throw-off than actually, when it comes down to it, where they need to win here, I don't think they would just you know, like, go with an uncommon Bloodseeker pick that they haven't really played that much before. Maybe, and also, I mean, if you're in the same position as Team Secret, you're by far the favorites in this tournament. You guys know that you're probably the best in the world so far. I mean, you feel that maybe you can just go with something more conventional and make people a little bit more worried about having to compete with the same pool of heroes. Well, this is why, you know, I, I don't have the stats to back this one up, but I'm going <laughs> to go ahead and throw this out there. This is why I think once they got that first monkey off their back, at Red, Bull, at Red Bull Battlegrounds, I feel like Team Secret have just been a different team. They've just, they've played with, they've played like they're playing with house money. But how many monkeys do they have total on their back? Do they still have another monkey on their back? Because that, that could be a problem, Alan. <laughs> I, I don't. I, I I didn't bring my monkey stats either. Sorry. Got you there again. Only about Dota. it. No, just kidding, man. I I think you've been saying that. And I think you've been nailing it on the head, though. Secret really have transformed and proven that. I, before that, I was like, we really like this team. They're really fun to watch. They're really good. And now it's like they're they're definitely the favorites. They're definitely the strongest team so far. Now we actually see the, the Bloodseeker band coming out from Ooh, from Fnatic. So there's definitely some respect. I really for the hero. actually was surprised to hear you say that in particular, Jacob. That uh, you're you're a Bloodseeker guy. No, yeah. I am. Like, I, I think, think, I think <laughs> Bloodseeker <laughs> is incredibly good. Don't get me wrong. I don't think that it, the hero doesn't deserve being picked. I just okay. don't think it's it's a, it's a necessity for Secret. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. All right. What do you think about the, the Lashrak Shadow Demon combo? This is something that goes way back, but has added really an extra dimension now that uh, the Lashrak is so frequently run as a core. And I'll ask you guys the same question as I did the last time that we saw Visage third pick. Are we going to see a draw at four from Team Secret? This is a very common opener for them with the right. clockwork yep. offlane. Most yep. people like ranged offlaners, but Secret, they've experimented with Darkseer and the offlane didn't work for them. Now they always go for clockwork uh, as, their, as their three. Uh, but yeah, Visage, Drought, I mean, they run Drought a lot, yeah. even without Visage. <laughs> Yeah, and it looks like that will be the natural progression here. So on the side of Fnatic, you probably have to expect that. Uh, I mean, do you do you bother to react to it, or at this well, point you've already just let it go through? This is a combo that Fnatic know quite well. Fnatic have run quite a bit of draw visage themselves, and uh, notwithstanding a, a very, very odd four-position draw ranger pick at MLG that did not work out for them, <laughs> uh, they play that combo very well themselves, and I think Bristleback is not a bad hero to pick when you think you're going to be uh, going to be going into that combo. All right, well, they're going with that bristle now. Are we going to see that drought here for Secret? Kai, what do you think? 
It's still very, very open to say to me, just because Visage draw is not as strong, strong anymore as it was before. Oh. Deep, but we, we, it, it does fit for sure. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. But I'm, I'm just saying that it, it's not the 100% common follow-up pick right. onto a Visage. It's not as high of a priority, but again, if you're in the position of Team Secret, even if it's not as strong, we, we've been talking, I mean, they feel comfortable with pretty much anything that they've been drafting. So anything common is definitely going to feel right in the palms of their hands. Well, and I also think it I also think that this lineup a let secret just keep the pressure on because Fnatic is a team their big weak point has been they've been susceptible to some very weak laning phases and they like to be very aggressive in the mid game so when they get off to these really rough starts they're not able to hit that mid game window that they play really well in and I think this is a lineup these first four from Team Secret they're going to be able to just apply pressure constantly from 0 to 30 minutes all right and the puck coming out and now we're in the last phase oh. one ban e left for each team if we're looking towards the laning here, I would assume it's going to be a draw mid uh, where you have a Queen of Pain on the short lane uh, with the Visage. But okay. they obviously can still switch around. I do like a draw better in the, in the mid position just because you get a faster six and then you're kind of yeah. just that aura hero for everyone else. Mm. And you're expecting the aggressive tri lane to come out of, from, of Fnatic since they picked the Shadow Demon less rag combo? It's, it's, it's still tough to tell because they, they could p go aggressive where you don't exactly know where the puck goes. Puck could still go short lane, puck could still go mid lane. It, I, it, I it's think not entirely said. I think aggro tri lane is a little bit too all in from Fnatic, and I, I don't necessarily mind that because you know you do know that you're the underdog in this series. But uh, my question for this lineup: if if your aggro tri lane really struggles, where do you go from there? As Fnatic, I think you can get enough done with still with a core less track with a shadow demon straight up support. I don't necessarily think you have to aggro try. I think if they aggro try, they can just stack the clock, and then it'll okay. be completely okay. Right, right. It, all right. It, it is a little bit too all in, especially if they're dire. If they're radiant, they can utilize that pull. But dire, if you don't get any kills in lane, you're just so far behind. But in dire. the past, we've seen Fnatic is one of the teams that are more prone to actually just go for that all in. They, they right. seem to be a bit more ballsy than other teams in, in terms of risking it. Yeah, and again, I, I mean, maybe that's the background they're coming from right they're kind of always seen as this underdog and they're like well we have to prove ourselves and we might as well throw it down now something i've learned i mean throughout all of esports is really if you're facing against probably what might be the strongest or second strongest team in a tournament you can't play on their terms you can't say we'll play the same game of consistency and go try to match you on all levels of the game maybe that is what they need to do just go all in and throw all bets on the table and the broodmother coming out as a ban from team secret i would generally say though that you, especially the sea scene, is very different in terms of picks very much <laughs> than any other region. Yeah. Yes. Also, China has their own kind of playstyle, but I feel like the in the in the recent past, China as well as um, the the e European slash US scene is closer and closer into in terms of right. in terms of meta. But C always runs their own kind of style. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, if you look at if you look at uh, at the stats at game to game volatility of power rankings in SEA, it's just it's all over the map. It's the most volatile <laughs> region by far, uh, and part of that is that the meta game is is just so unstable. It shifts from week to week. Oh, well, maybe that's what can make this game so exciting. Of course, I mean, we've been talking so much about secret being willing to do crazy things, but as you guys are starting to bring up during the picks here, Fnatic, not a stranger to that world. What are our lanes, guys? I, I, I still feel like we got a Mushi Puck here and a KYXY Bristle. I could imagine a Windrunner pick coming out from, from Fnatic. It's a it's a hero they have success with and are very fond of. And as you were saying, you know, uh, C and Fnatic in particular seem to have their, their own priority picks, almost dating back to 6.48B days in, in Dota 1. Because they just they love to pick the the Sand King and Lina even even if they're not in meta and just stack up these these heroes. All right. Well, the lineup is finished for Secret. What, what are we looking at? I mean, keep the light to round it out. They usually like a hero that doubles as sustain as well as uh, defensive capabilities. Mm. It's usually Dazzle. Sometimes it's Vengeful Spirit, but keep it light with Ags or even Blinding Light can serve a very similar. It, it, role. it could be Perfect. that they picked that Caudal as last just. If they're concerned with a aggressive tri lane, Coddle in that sense is very oh. strong to defend. Definitely. All right, my, my two, I mean, you guys just absolutely nailed on the head. <laughs> the, the number one thing is when you have a Drow Visage lineup, I like at least one hero that can help sustain the push. 
And number two, I like the fact that you get a hero that can lock down in case you have to face that aggressive trial and they get a couple early kills. You have a hero that can at least zone that trial and out and make them think twice about diving you constantly. Yeah, again, just showing showing the flexibility really here from uh, Secret and also just their knowledge of you know the drafts and what they're up against. Just making sure, hey, we can cover both sides now in terms of strategy and we're not too worried. So Fnatic with one minute left, what is what is their pick going to be? Can they pick something that can really turn things around or now do they just kind of have to accept it and go with what they're most comfortable I with? I think something that's very, very early game. Uh, Undying, I think, would come to mind as long as they can protect the Tombstone. I've seen a lot of draw lineups just kill the Tombstone in three or four hits, <laughs> which is really bad, but uh, I, I definitely don't think they need more late game. You're gonna I, do. You're gonna do. If you do that, you're you gonna don't do undying so? in the mm. trial. You think they can get away with this? What they have? No. I don't know. I, I mean, I think they they have to go for all in on the early. <laughs> I wouldn't. Right. I wouldn't even. Ooh. I wouldn't even locked on here. The the option of just having Lesh SC roaming together, and then you have a puck mid. Oh wow. Wow. But it it okay. seems wow. like is that a is that a yeah, Lesh truck? I think you can. <laughs> <laughs> Puck off lane? Bristol no, off lane? I, I, no, Puck is mid, I think. I think you could go, I think you could go the three solo laners and just have the Leshrac and SD roam. All right. Well, we'll find out again. I mean, both teams showing a lot of flexibility. We'll That's see if Johnny that really shows up in game number one as we open things up. The game is ready. Picks and bands are done. So let's throw it over to the casters for the last match of the evening. Thank you very much. Yes, myself and Cinderin are together finally for our last game of the day. And what a hell of a series to actually have here, Sind. Secret, the team which everyone was flagging, is number one. And Fnatic, the team which you never know what you're going to expect from them. Yeah, this is a crazy draft from Fnatic. It's, it's a lot more stable from Secret. I've seen them play a very similar strategy before. It's been tested. It's been for them. Get a a lot of their trademark heroes, so I think they go in with a lot of confidence. And the question is if Fnatic are going to catch them by surprise with their laning, with their early movements, especially when you invest into something like an Enigma, which looks like it is going to be in the jungle played by Johnny. Yep. This is a greedy pick, which might just work because Secret have shown their hand entirely with their support duo, with the Visage and Coddle. They have very limited invasion potential on level one, and Johnny should be able to start off well in the jungle now. The question is, how are the other lanes going to go? I just called the jungle a lane. It's the fourth lane. <laughs> Of Dota. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, well, I'm, I'm really curious to see what Fnatic are doing. This is a, a very special draft from them. Yeah, it, it, it kind of is. And I know it actually goes against something which we were talking about previously before we started this game up, which was how much does Sig like, Secret value the jungle? How much money is there really to pull out from this? And what effect do you see from the Enigma? But if Enigma can get this early mech, free up the Bristleback to buy something else, like maybe even a Hal, but if he can close the distance on that Dry Ranger or Disarm, um, choices are available there. There. And you've got more choices when you get the Blink Dagger up and running because the team fight of Fnatic is really, really scary. Between Dream Call, Black Hole, the setup which can come from just a simple disruption and the control from Purge, then you've got the Shrek's done, the mass amount of damage that he does. It's a lot to work with for, for both teams, really. Speaking of the Enigma, I think it's really confident from Fnatic to uh, to go for that here. Here, Actually, let's wait a second. Yeah, this level one unfolds. Zai with some good cogs. Yeah, but unfortunately, actually, the cogs lock him out, but KYXY is battling up against Puppy, but it's Johnny and Mushy, who are the two slow on Bazai, he'll pick up the rune. KYXY is bailing out of here. The Illuminate won't hit anything because Fnatic will just disengage. So Secret the first rune went... Runes. <laughs> they will. And we will go to S4 on the bottom and it will go to Bazai, who gets to play the offlane. So what I was going to say is this Enigma pick is very confident from Fnatic because I actually don't really know how good of a fighting Enigma game it is. Uh, when it comes to pushing lanes, it's difficult to push into Illuminate and Rocket Flare with just the Eidolons. And if you're looking for black holes, you're playing into Gust, you're playing into Hookshot, you're playing into Familiars, which are actually really good against it. And Johnny is going to have a very difficult game because of this. He's even going to start in the mid lane here, trying to help out Muji against Arteezy, who has a little bit of a head start here when it comes to damage dealt, as I think Mushi got the, took quite a bit of damage in that level one fight. Yeah, that's just the reason why he's there. And classic dual offlane from Secret. They love playing this clock coddle lane, I think. In my opinion, they're absolute best dual offlane. They play this lane very, very well. Is How effective is it going to be, though, when you have a Shadow Demon that can set up with Disruption and KOXY, who, like, we're, we're watching uh, Keecha give him a, as much space as he can on the top lane, because then he's going to have level two, you'll have Lightning available, and you'll also have that Disruption up and running. So you've got the setup, you've got the stuns, you've got the control. 
how much can they survive if it's Puppy who's the one that gets called out of position? Because I don't think they can kill the Clockwork. I think if they initiate on Puppy, he is not going to die. Because then, well, it's well, uh, right speaking now. Speaking of dying. They can always just go for a play like this. I think that was really aggressive coming in for Pichi. He is going to be on the receiving end of this one. Zai getting the first blood. Huge first blood, massive first blood. At the same time, the Bristol Pack actually denied himself off because Kuro was harassing him so heavily, he just basically ran, ran himself into the Dire Ancients and killed himself off. So it actually shows us 2-0 on the board in favor of Team Secret. And Fnatic had just been completely forced out of, I'm gonna say the bottom lane at least. The Bristol Pack's a long way back. S4's got so much farm now that coming back to that lane, I'm not gonna say a suicide, but it's gonna be difficult. And the top lane, you've given momentum to a clock Work. That's probably more dangerous than anything, but they're gonna have a crack top lane disruption. Lightning started up the, the second stun and now lightning follow up. Zai will be dropping here. Stick charging the cogs, not gonna do enough. Fnatic gets some revenge on secret. This kill is so incredibly important because. If you look at how this lane was starting to play out, I think Secret getting the first blood there was just flat out a mistake from Kachik. Even if he catches Puppy there and does a bit of damage, KYXY was never in a position to reach the Split Earth. And they can't really initiate on the Coddle, because the moment they do it, Zai will just run into the Lesh. He will either cog him and knock him back, or he will use Battery Assault. And if he interrupts any sort of spell cast from that Lesh in the lane, they're trading they're trading mana, which is already a loss, right? Because Secret can just keep chakraing up there. So they need to be a little more careful, or in incorporate the Enigma in the lane play, try to rotate in Johnny early. There's no warding for Secret up here to help them out, and the Enigma has to be involved, I think. But he can't really do much until those boots are up and running. Like, he's got the Sol Ring now, so that's gonna be great. But he won't have enough movement speed to actually get into the lane to really be effective. Unless you're gonna sit him on the sidelines, but then you run the risk of feeding off conversions as well. Well, as long as they set up with a disruption into a stun from Lesh, they should have time for Johnny's Eidolons to actually move in. Even though they only have 250 move speed, it's probably enough. Between disruption and a Lesh stun is 4.5 seconds, so... I do think they could do that, but you know, we'll see. I, at the same time, you don't want to involve Johnny more in the kills than he has to because he really is under a lot of pressure in this game to get some farm. Yeah, if you can if you can give him all the space in the world to just farm up inside the jungle and you still get what you're searching for around the lanes, which is not really that many deaths, but you're still finding like even CS, then you're going to be fine. But Poppy's already trying to put an end to this. He puts down the Observed Wards, came on a bit of a smoke mission and actually blocks up two of the camps from Johnny. So Johnny will be forced out of the jungle anyway. He does have one sentry ward left on himself, but where he puts it, so that's a big question. He's gonna hear a grave chill here from Kuro, snatching the bounty rune from Ohio in the bottom lane. And I, I want to talk a little bit about this lane, by the way. I think Bristleback off lane is a thing of the past. I think it's too weak right now. The hero doesn't really scale, he doesn't fight very well from behind, and you really set him up for a bad lane. If you put him against a dual lane with Drow Aura from the beginning, I'm worried for Fnatic that Ohio is going to do almost nothing this it's, game. It's he okay. One CS. He's, one CS is fine, but he's got a Mango. What more do you need, dude? Uh, experience? That'll be a good thing to have. That's pretty good. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go against that one. <laughs> <laughs> he's level two, he's level six. Quite good luck, buddy. Well, this lane is impossible, actually. And the trade-off they're getting is not good enough. Yeah. They can't even make up for it. They're behind on experience and gold with an Enigma in the early game. The, the Enigma's first real movement into the lane is going to tell us probably more than anything else. And he's actually bought smoke as well. So it looks like Johnny is going to make this first movement. He is a 1-3-1 build. There is no black hole available. Top lane, they're going to have a crack. Disruption into the stun. There is lightning to follow up at level 3. It's a lot of damage to side with the catch and the poison. I don't know if that's enough. 100 points of life. And now the Sonic Wave, they try and turn around. And Kijik will go down. And surprisingly, Zai, he'll be able to survive. I'm surprised KYXY didn't try to follow that one through on the clockwork. I thought they could have brought Zai down. I, it seemed like he just stopped chasing. One more attack would have triggered the Shadow Poison, or he could have triggered it and then got the kill. But instead, Zai gets to live. Good rotation from his four, though, regardless of whether they would have killed Zai or not. He would have definitely got that return kill. Secret looking good in this early game. They're building up a pretty significant lead already, and Kuro even gets to safe lane a bit now with the rotation of S4. It does come to a sacrifice, though, because now Ohio is finding levels on the yes. Bristleback, and Fnatic has spotted this out. So they try and punish the fact that Kuro is doing this. Initiates on Ohio, but Mushy, he's rotated himself down. Jumped in with a Dream Call, Soul Sunshine Damage, just not enough on Bristleback. A good pick off here from Fnatic, and great rotation from Mushy. Yeah, so S4 finds a kill top, Mushy finds a kill bottom. Doing the same thing, just 30 seconds apart. And out of these two kills, in my opinion, the bottom kill is more important. Like, I, I really think they need Ohio to, to get this kind of help to become relevant. So Mushi with the play there. 
is going to try to help Ohio get in the game. But just to give you some perspective here, Zai is level six on clock in a moment. The Bristle who just got his lane ganked is level three and a half, and he has no ancient stacks. His recovery curve is really long, and he just does less than a clock with the same amount of farm as Zai. He's going to be really Catcher careful. actually hit the creep. He's actually got two points, and now three stacks of poison on him. And oh. this is going to be a fourth one. No, it's off target. He'll be in the tree line and TP out, so the damage isn't enough to get the kill. He'll drop down, but not by, not by enough to find it. If Kachik finds the fourth poison there, I think that is a kill. It's level three poison, actually. Yeah, that would have yep. definitely been enough. It's Zai playing with fire. Uh, Johnny, out. smoke just broke, but the mouth was stunned. Kept in the black hole, right on top of Vartizi. Mushi needs a little bit more. That's why he jumps in for the orb. And actually got an more in the TP, but Mushi's so low. The screen will kill him. Vartizi will still drop. This will be a double kill for S4 as he'll blink up to avoid Johnny. Oh, actually commits made. suicide with his own conversions. Denied right the fight in front of the T1 tower. Very, very nice deny from Johnny. I think the black hole, however, is a little bit too early because the problem there is he wants to have the black hole a little bit later when the TP support comes in from S4, so they get to catch him in it as well. They also didn't manage to layer the silence in the black hole perfectly, so they take a lot of damage before the silence comes out. I mean, granted, it's three quarters of a second of silence, but still, that kind of play might allow Mushi to face shift one of S4 spells and could have perhaps turned into a one for zero instead of... They're going bottom lane again. Koro, Mushi TPs in with no lane board. He has no in, no no warning about this coming in. Mushi will just bring him down with an old clockwork hook shot in, but the dire creep wave was there. So Zai unable to connect. Fnatic are, are finding some picks here to uh, to level up the game a little bit. And every time they do too. Oh, they might find another one. Wow, this is gonna get way too easy after a while. Zai just getting bursted down with both the orb and the rift, but with the defensive cogs up, he gets back and S4 joined the fight. Sonic Wave is available. Mushi's already used phase shift, which means he is dead to the world. Maybe with a disruption available, but he doesn't actually throw it. He didn't have it. It was actually on cooldown. So S4 moves in quickly, finds the kill. I think they were hoping there that they, he would be able to face shift that attack to bait S4 into blinking for the kill. And then maybe they could have counterplayed him with a uh, Shadow Poison Soul Catcher and a couple of quills. But, or maybe they were waiting for one more tick to deny. I'm not sure Shadow Demon could have actually killed him there. So maybe there was no play at all. Mm. Could it be something, could be nothing. Basic summary. <laughs> Dro Ranger, though, is looking like she's really, really good. Like, you've died once on Arteezy, which for his mid-solo, Dro Ranger is actually very, 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 very good. Um, but having three Wraith Bands as well as these these treads, he does what he always does with this Dro Ranger. He gives so much power to the rest of the map. This Queen of Pain's walking around with a bonus 39 physical damage. Not to mention Keeper of the Light can do exactly the same thing. Uh, he's actually in ghost form at the moment, can potentially call in someone, and they found an opening. It's going to be on the Shadow Demon. Starts off with the all pushes in back and it will be able to connect S4 nice jump in defensive though on the disruption into lightning S4 no blink seven seconds on cooldown now it's gonna make it hard to get away and will strike some will connect S4 is gonna drop big kill it goes to KOXY oh, wow. which makes it even bigger Kitschik had like three HP after that rocket he still stays alive Zai with a I believe that was a level three rocket actually he's trying another one uh, Kashyyyk's gonna dodge that. He's expecting it. Takes the long path. Mm -hmm. He might have to dodge a third one, actually. Zai has in five. He'll, he'll get back to base in time. He'll have enough heal. It's possible he's gonna try for it. I'm actually not sure. If he shows it right now... All right, he's not trying. Oh, he is. Oh, he found no. someone else. Yeah, the, the, the second rocket he fired off flew over Ohio while he's watching him do this. Oh, and the hook wow. shot up! He's got a double damage rune! Locks him inside the clock to Ohio! Trial break, free stick chance, can't help him! Disruption! There it is! Buy some time! Zyno more battery assault left Ohio! He's so low! The Dream Call will control the rocket for clockwork! Zy finds the kill! The revenge is bittersweet! They're able to find it back, Mushy, with yet another rotation kill. That makes it two. Kitschik is being a super clutch in this game so far in his Shadow Demon. Apart from that one mistake he made in the early laning stage, playing a bit too aggressively, he, his disruptions have been pretty much perfect. And right there, they end up getting a trade because he just barely makes it, else Clock will easily get that kill and get out. Now, oh, he pops 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 and he pulls him down! The Sonic Wave from S4 will finish him off quick enough. That TP didn't come, Puppy was dead to rights. He wanted that to happen though. I think he recalled he recalled before he ran into the lash, so just wanted to get S4 in as good a position as possible for that. And does manage to bait out a kill as well as secure their top tier one for now. They could deny it if they want. It's got 80 health remaining. 
Uh, but might just want to hold on to it for uh, for strategic purposes, just being able to TP to that tower, uh, maybe have a little bit of a more unclaimed gold for Fnatic right now, delaying the... Oh, I was about to say delaying the Mech of Enigma. He is 18 gold away. He's probably going to get it soon anyway. Yeah. But uh, delay the, the Blink Dagger or Puck. Yes. Because he's a little bit further away. It's 1,600 gold on this Puck. Uh, but, okay, let's look at KOA XY. Latrak has been banned out in the first two most of the time for a very, very, very good reason. How is he looking at the moment? With one point booster, Arcane Boost and almost a thousand gold, is this the position you want to be in as a Latrak? I think it's good enough. He is... Uh... I think he's pretty much on par with what you expect at this point, with, with one death and... Playing in a two on two lane, it's a little bit tricky when it comes to farming all in all. But I think he's oh, he's looking good. Disruption catcher on top lane. It's S4 that who will blink himself away, lane. but he's he not that far oh, off. Wow. The tie hook shots in. The guy's actually face shifted out by Mushi. He won't be affected. S4 still having to send his ground. And they've gone bomb potentially too. RTG oh. trying to run away, but Mushi up on the high ground. They want to keep playing it up, but it's popping in the middle of this fight. They can't do anything with that blinding light, but now back it up. Koro, trouble with KOX by turning on the pulse over now. Zai, a perfect block. Cogs. Ohio's got no way to get through, but he sees Arteezy to chase after him. The puppy again, pushing them back with that blinding light. There is a little bit of a chase. It's Zai after Mushi. The Dire Observer was down, and Zai's got no way to really chase this. He's got 16 one charges at least, and the familiar drop down. It actually caught out the SD. Mushi faces it out. The Cog pushed back by KOXY. Maybe now he can catch out Zai. The Cogs are there. Turn on the Edict. The Pulse over with the Sun. They have enough damage to kill off Zai. Supports on the way in with Poppy's Illuminate. Johnny, he's pretty low. They've already got the kill. The Illuminate, it won't reach him in time. They will back up before the range can go, and that is going to be 9-8 to eight now, keeping it close, keeping it tight. That fight could have gone even worse for Secret. I think Johnny had the shortest black hole I've ever seen, or at least tied for top three. He immediately, when he cast it, he got hit by Battery Assault in the back. So Zai doing a really good job lashing onto him, and actually that ends up keeping Arteezy alive in that fight, as I think the black hole would have caught him in that at that point in time. So... They get, still got a 3 for 0 with a completely whiffed black hole. Mm -hmm. They still won that fight convincingly, and it's all about the engage. Once again, Kachik Imba, as well as Mushi with some big plays here. I hate, I hate to pose the question right now, but does Secret have enough damage to kill off Fnatic? As I now see two Vit boosters flying back on the courier for Ohio as well as KYXY. This Lashrak as well as Brusselback are getting bigger with every minute that passes. Is the draw range of... Is, is she even your damage that you're focusing on? Like, you've now got the Yasha on, on Arteezy. He's pumping out a crap ton of damage, over 200 a pop. But is this enough? Yes. They definitely have enough damage. But what they need to work around is the amount of control that Fnatic has. It's going to be very difficult for them to deal their damage when Enigma walks in with the mech ready. Because they have to try to find... Either they have to do exactly what Zai did there with uh, just like, getting him onto the Enigma and trying to run him down. But if they cluster a little bit too much, even if they don't get Black Hole, just the overall AoE damage that Fnatic's lineup can output with just catching two or three heroes in Dream Coil, you're in a lot of trouble if your secret and that happens. Lightning Storm will be able to be captured twice, Bristleback will be in a decent position, and even though, as I pointed out in the start, Ohio got completely shut down, they Mushy. actually managed to give him a bit of a comeback Top so he lane. can do stuff. Going off to Poppy, he has the double damage room, but can he actually hit in there? Missing the silence, and he'll actually die from the Dream Call break. The rest of Fnatic is grouping up to try and force out the bottom lane, so the top tower will be denied. That's one deny for one deny, and the TP support coming in from Mushy to hold on to this mid tower, at least slow it down, while KOXY with the Edict forcing through the tier one. He can't actually do it. The familiars are phasing him out. So Queen of Pain will get the last hit, and Fnatic will get another trade-off. So it's the tier one in mid for the tier one on bottom. I think Fnatic are okay with this. If you look over the strategies and what they're supposed to do, this is the phase where Fnatic need to get through it without too big of a deficit. And right now it's a dead even game. I think if you look, if you say this, we hold this position with a, a dead even game 10 minutes down the line, Secret has like this really solid minute 20 to 25 where if Fnatic overcome that one as well, I think they're going to start scaling very well where the, the main thing is just get someone in on Arteezy every fight. Because if the if the draw war is not an effect, I think Secret's damage at that point will not be enough. You asked a few minutes ago and I think for now it's good enough. 
But come that point when especially this Rack starts get, getting tanky and bristle too, they might actually not be able to do it anymore. Well, the only way you could potentially do it, because there's no jump in initiation apart from the Puck. So Puck would have to jump right on top of the Dro Ranger to make it happen, and normally he doesn't stick around. So does that then mean you almost have to rush a Blink Dagger over on the Enigma? Oh, Artizi is Artizi, really this is not in a good closet. position right now. I'm not sure what he was Wait. expecting here. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is a dream call trying to battle up against him. The cat's are able to connect. Oh, Defensive disruption. Well. And that's easy. It's still taking a while to bring him down. And there she oh, gets the kill God. inside of death. <sighs> They're going to go on bottom lane through S4. Nice one shot in. They found Johnny looking for the stun. Black hole. He does not want to trigger it here. That banner is all still doing work in the blade mount. Couldn't attack into Zai. KOH by blinding let it force back out. Even I think it was Manali, which actually triggered a secondary stun. It was. Puffy had enough enough knockback range on that blinding light to get him out of mana for the stun else that kill does not happen very very nice play here from secret and uh well technically they shouldn't have had that kill on drow but apart from that that was uh that was definitely a nice said mushy doing it nice with the silence there was no blinding light to stop him he has to try and get himself out of this mess though and it looks like actually having that secondary tp cancelled uh he will just walk away but yeah atz was up so far I'm really surprised he was up there pushing. I, it looked like Secret wanted to draw attention to that lane so that they could gank bottom at the same time, mm -hmm. and they were successful. But ultimately, if that orb from Mushi hits, then Arteezy doesn't get a kill, and it basically turns into a trade that's not really that favorable for them. So The sad thing is, too, it actually came down to uh, the last hitting, too. It was one attack yeah. for one attack, and Mushi, when he first orbed in, he actually attacked the creep wave. He didn't actually attack directly into Arteezy. So the damage wasn't wasn't there as well. I was about to say Mushi is probably going to go for a Dagon, but he takes the Yule's route. I think wanting to deal with mainly the Gust, having a counterplay to that silence is going to be very useful. And of course, a secondary way of stopping TPs. Uh, Not a bad setup in some ways too, because he could yeah. start be setting. He could set up for KYXY. I'm wondering if they're. There's not really any Blink Dagger carrier in Secret, apart from, I guess, Arteezy at some point might want to go for it in the Drow. So the fall damage from the Yules isn't going to be good for preventing that on anyone, but it's still just a solid choice on Puck overall. It's it's one of those items that you almost never regret getting, yep. unless you really lack damage. I do not think that's going to be a problem for Fnatic, though. He should be fine. KOXY has finished up the Bloodstone. He's going to fly out in the Courier, but he's very, very close to Puppy. But his Illumina's going to help force out that top lane, not to mention the Familiars, which are still here. That bush, he's done a pretty damn good job on the bottom lane too, so he'll TP back and that is the full Yule Scepter now done 18 minutes and a half into this game. And Fnatic are ready to fight. Did John, you? Johnny has his black hole up and running. Did you notice Puppy's item build by the way? Did you talk about that? What did he end up going for? Apart, <laughs> I saw Tranquils and now he's got Arcanes as well. Okay. One for each foot. He's got four to fill, it's man. That's a lot. He forgot he bought the first pair. Transition. Right. <laughs> there is no transition. Awkward from that. challenge. Thanks, Toby. That's really I, nice of you. I, All right. I'm, I'm here for you, man. It wasn't the best joke, I know. Oh, don't worry. That's why you're sitting next to me. I'll make your jokes look fantastic. Uh, All right. Well, Crimson Guards now up to the Bristol right? back. This Fnatic team fight is looking stronger and stronger again. So you got the Bloodstone up for KYXY. You've got your Black Hole with Mech. You've got your Blink Yule Scepter up and running. You've still got Purge up, and Ohio is now going to put a Crimson Guard on top of all of Fnatic. They can just start to force down buildings and secretly either look for a trade-off, which it looks like they're doing at the moment. S4 with a DD rune can probably do heavy damage to that T1 tower on bottom. And Puppy's keeping the, the pressure forced on top. But actually, Fnatic, they're searching for kills. They're not pushing down the towers. They're going to come off the worst for this trade. Especially now the KOXY leaves. Goes down to defend the bottom lane. Well, they did get the mid tower, at least, for, uh, for the Bristle, who's... I, you know, took the tier one. I might have to eat my words because Ohio has actually had a really big impact and he is getting farmed. Like they managed to recover him very nicely. The reason I'm I'm so against offlane Bristol is that I feel like this never happens. But Fnatic have actually managed to accomplish it this game, which is very good to see because if this Bris Bristol would have been destroyed a little bit more in that lane, I think we could have been looking at a very one-sided game. But yeah. he is he is looking really strong actually. He's second on net worth with that offlane Bristol back. Ohio has 
he's been incredible this game so far. They bought him so much space with Mushy's rotations, because remember, Mushy did come down twice to that bottom lane to ensure that you could find the space of the Bristleback. The second, the Secret tried to buy space for their Visage, for Kuro, to get a very quick level 6. He's level 10 now and very, very happy with life. Um, but when they did that, it meant Bristleback could move forward, Puck made sure they were able to be part of multiple kills, and then you're rotating around with the rest of your team, finding even more kills, and then that's more space for Ohio. You don't have to bring him in until the fight really starts. But they're already going to do it. He's actually the right place at the right time. It's where the farm is. But Puppy's right behind him. Starts the Manalik in Ohio. She just sit exactly where he is. Then again, Mushy probably shouldn't. He's right on top of a Radiant Observer Ward, and they're converging on his position. And that's with an Orchid from S4. But then, you'll set her up. He can face shift and wait for the Blink Dagger, or in fact, just blink himself phase. down. And the hook shot! He bumped into the back of S4. So Zion able to connect on the retreating puck. Now that means KOXY has got a ticket to basically push. This bottom tower's down a half of his life with conversions and catapults and forces mass amounts of uh, TPs down the bottom lane to defend it. And Mushi immediately putting the Yules to use against the Orchid of S4. Of course, they are really, really important to avoid kills like this, where Secret are actually, you know, it's not just that they don't kill the puck, it's how much information Mushi is able to gather from that gank failing. It opens up the map. Ohio feels confident farming up top. They have really good vision right now inside the Radiant Jungle as well. So I'm looking for Fnatic to make the next play. Now with Hookshot on cooldown as well, they might actually just be able to if they can perhaps smoke into the Radiant Jungle or something like that? Well, d do they actually have to? Like, right now, you're looking at more Ancient Stacks coming up. Uh, Johnny's going back to his farm to try and get towards, I'm assuming, a Blink Dagger. And you've got Lashrak finding more farm. Mushy's doing the same kind of thing. Is Fnatic even under pressure to come out and engage against Secret? Well, Arteezy's getting big. That's a, that's a concern. As you talked about, it scales the entire team up. He's now got a BKB. He will definitely be looking for another agility item now, either completing his Manta or maybe looking at either a Scotty. He could look at a Butterfly, which would be not that great this game, but still just for the agility, obviously really nice for his team. So I think they should be looking for fights. Um, if they're confident that they can keep controlling the drow afterwards. I did say, like, come in at 25, I'm not sure they have the damage. That is given that they get in on Arteezy. So they have to itemize and they have to play the team fights around catching him out. Mm -hmm. Else I don't think they can play the game this way. Well, they're going to have a little bit more maneuverability with KOXY's next item, not actually being any of the big ones, actually going for more of a utility four-star build. It's and good against Clock, obviously. And Ohio, we actually have uh, a new plate mail being on him. Puppy, dead. Mushy right in behind him. You got silences, you got dream calls, you got lightnings, and you got a split up to find the kill. It's commitment to ensure death. But at the same time, secret. Now knowing the dream calls on cooldown, and they are looking towards that mid tower. How far they get though? Not that far. They actually blink back out. Ohio's gonna run out of here, so S4 will find him. And does he even want to have a crack at this? Arteez is going to gust him back. At the same time, Zai, a defensive cog, really going to mouth for Sun off. Zai wants to hookshot himself away, but keeps getting oh, stuck. The Yules have dropped the wrong time for Mushy, but they have the silence, and they will get the kill. Sai with a little bit of a, a martyr play there. I don't even know if he needed to do that, to be honest. I think his teammates might have got away. Perhaps Arteezy... Oh, wait, actually, Arteezy had cooldown on TP, so I guess he couldn't BKB TP. So that in mind, that might have been worth it, but of course, the ultimate prize here, Fnatic, they will be getting Roshan. There is no way Secret are able to contest this right now. Not at all. And I want to say, in this game, they've been focusing a lot on farming Kuroki, which I think is a great way of playing Visage in general. It's just, I'm so used to seeing Kuroki being involved more in kills that it's a different kind of style that might completely take catch Fnatic off guard how fast he's actually getting this Ags. Um, but yeah, until now, he's only been in one kill on Visage minute 24. That is very unusual. This is the item we're talking about. Close the distance on Arteezy. Johnny's now got his Blink Dagger up and running. So we have Blink Black Holes, we have Blink Dream Calls. So much control, and Mushy, speaking of that, you'll set her up, s force right on top of him. Where's the Blink Dagger? Can't get it off, phase shift, Mushy doesn't have time. The cold position from Zai was perfect, it pushed him back, and now it's S4 that gets a large amount of money for that. Overall, it was 478 for that kill. Yeah, that was perfectly executed. It's the only way they force him to Yule in the first place, is that Orchid, and then he thinks he can phase Blink, but he was stunlocked from full to zero.
Now KYXY is pushing out top, and let's keep in mind that every time Fnatic take a good fight, KYXY is getting these Bloodstone charges. He's up to 10 right now. He's found two assists, I believe, with it. Maybe one of them was actually a kill. Uh, yeah, he got the Clockwork kill. So he is starting to get items. Ohio, or charges rather, Ohio is also making some serious progress on his Bristle. I'm curious to see if he goes for the uh, Shivas or for the Kiras in this game. I think it might be a Shivas game just because they really don't have that much physical damage that his teammates benefit from, whereas when it comes to team fighting, he just needs that slow aura against all the physical damage of Secret and as another way of catching up to Drow. Yeah, because once that Shivas guard is hit, then Drow, Drow Ranger just slows down so much, and you're right, it's movement speed versus not movement speed if we want to be <laughs> really that raw. Oh, it's easy uh, to go to SNY, though. He's pretty fast, too. 406. So. But okay. Bristol is going to be way faster with a couple of Warpath stacks. And yep. Just popping the Shivas. And, th and then he's also got the help from Lightning from KOXY, and that's going to bounce through him. So getting close on the Drow Ranger and staying there is pretty easy. And now S4, Mushy. Well, they actually take the Sun straight away. Can Mushy reach him in time to actually Yule Scepter him up? This oh. might allow him to get recalled back out by Puppy. That Able to save it. So all. close. The moment he lands, he will take 50 damage, and that recall will be cancelled. But mid-air, you can recall him to the location of Puppy there. That was really clutch. And the question is if Mushi made a mistake there, going for the Yules. Could he have reached any spell? I actually don't okay, think so. Why big play. All right, Just doesn't matter. In and able to get the perfect sun onto S4, so he dies anyway. And then Mushi wants to go for more. He's found Kuro in the mid with the poison, but decides not to stick around. Yeah, there's no coil available. They're not interested in taking this fight right now. Rather, playing a bit of map control. A dire are farming the Radiant Jungle. KYXY with the solo kill top gets a lot of space as well. That kind of kills really define a, or make a huge difference in the game. Even though it's just one kill on S4, they get pushed, they get pushed on the top lane. Mm -hmm. It's a really big surprise kill. KYXY gets Bloodstone charge, and it also results in this bottom tier too, because S4 doesn't have buyback. He will not be available for this fight. Yep. Very, very big heads up play from KY. At the same time, we did actually get the item out from Ohio. It wasn't the Shiva's guard like we thought. It's a full assault cuirass, and has completed a 27 minutes in for Ohio. So he did? Yep. He did go for the Kyrus. Yep. So negative armor plus armor. Not that bad when you're trying to beat, beat through the buildings, especially if you're just by yourself or well, only there, got one person There were to two help. ways to look at this, right? One of them is we do not have enough physical damage to benefit from the Kyrus. The other one is we really need physical damage because we can't rely on magical damage only, right? Mm -hmm. So it's one of those situations where you're like, you weigh the pros and cons and you think, okay, KYXY actually just got a lot of gold. He can get a Shivas fast. Then it's probably a no-brainer because he wants that as part of his build. And I would say it's definitely better for them to get one of each rather than the two Shivas, so... This top, top rune is going to go to Mushi, gets a bounty. Uh, he's going to be okay. And the bot rune sucks, so nobody wants that one. <laughs> it's, it's the best rune of the game, Send. Yeah, one out of a uh, hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> but then it's great. <laughs> that is fantastic, and it makes for the wonderful chooks. But Mushi will pick up both, so hey, why not? Well, it looks like Fnatic It's a big group up on top. They do still have KOXY forcing in the mid with Mushi. Just orb and lightning damage doing the work. And this for, well, there's a bunch of conversions on bottom lane that's going to be slowing down this push, at least from him. And that'll allow time for Fnatic to hit the Tier 2 tower before the, cre the Creep Wave of Secret will hit the Tier 1. Kuro should also be really careful where he is. That's a dire Observe Ward on top of the hill. He doesn't see this, but of course, Fnatic see him. TPing out, they jump in, look for the stun. Mistiming the disruption will still, however, cancel the TP out from Kuro, so they will find this kill, and maybe even a couple of his familiars. And in fact, they're actually splitting up the fight. KYXY TP's the bottom lane to go for the defense while Mushy wraps around the back of the tier 2 tower on top. Now Cuddle, the recall's already starting in. Arteezy's come to the top lane. They're gusting onto illusions of the puck. See, illusion rune is useful. Uh, and tier 2 tower uh, will remain alive Sick. in the dark. <laughs> well... So, Fnatic actually make a really good play pulling, uh, just getting away from this tower right away. They realize, okay, they've poured their Lesh Rack bottom, Secret might have the buyback here, they're aiming to defend the tower. They force out the Glyph, they're like, okay, Secret want to actually fight for this, we're not even going to give them the chance to get a comeback in this game, we're just going to keep finding our oh. pickoffs and playing our game. They're coming, they're coming top, they're looking for RTZ or S4, and uh, Johnny has his Blink Dagger, and in fact, S4 jumps into him, goes for the Orchid, can actually give Johnny some time oh, to destruction, a Phaser Sonic Wave, 
S4 will blink down into the river. Johnny will follow him down here with Mushy. Commands from Black Hole. S4 controls up his BKB. He'll drop. And there is no help to come in from the rest of Secret. Zio is considering a hook shot in, but wisely decided against him. That was the 10 second BKB kill. Kitchik's timing in this game is just so good. <laughs> that disruption. Beautiful timing from him once again. Fnatic are really bringing their A game for this game one. Yeah, and they and they hold the control. They have gold as well as experience advantage now. Roughly 1,500 for both. And they're getting themselves further and further ahead. Oh, Arteezy, he is not winning this fight. Uh, uh, all right. <laughs> he is winning K1X, my lead. What? <laughs> what? I guess he was he was afraid of the backup coming in, but that yep. just looks really funny in that situation. <laughs> He's totally got him. He could just run him down, force out the BKB, and then go away. <laughs> <laughs> safety uh, first, Cinder, and safety first. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> but yes, it was a pure one-on-one. -on -one. But no team's got any kind of vision inside the Radiant Jungle. It's only where the creep waves and the heroes are moving. The closest ward you have to the Radiant Jungle is the Radiant one, which is sitting halfway up mid lane. Even the Dire Vision, they have... Is that only one Dire Observer Ward in the map, which is watching the top rune? I can see sentries on the top, but that's it. This map is really dark for both sides. But at the yeah. same time, like, Fnatic don't really need to see where they're going in the dark. They just walk up. The second they appear, they go for them. Especially now that Mushy has an Aghidim Scepter Dream Coil on this puck. That is a very big deal. Now they have another way of playing around Arteezy. They can just coil him in the back. And if... I actually think it's possible that the best play for Mushi, even if there's a team fight breaking out, is just blinking to the back, coiling Arteezy so, in such a way so that if he wants to move into the fight, he has to break it. That's a 4.5 seconds done that they have to single out other heroes. It's, of course, great against uh, S-Force Quap as well, so when he blinks, he will also get stunned, but it is definitely targeted at Arteezy's drown in this game. Oh, Arteezy's looking to try and target well, Fnatic, but Fnatic move back. They will also smoke up the same as Secret have and try and find one opening. They'll take from that top rune. Now, there's no Radiant Vision there, so they won't have seen that happen. And in fact, they move up. There goes your smoke break. Over on Zai, Dream Call. Over on him, Silas. The Blade will protect him for the moment. And in comes S4. Right from behind, Silas is galore as well as BKBs, but still no kills. Mushy's the one who's isolated on the side. The Sonic timing, Wave right? is all of Fnatic. But where is your puck? He's still face shifted up, blinks into the tree line. Mushy, TP's on cooldown, so he has to all further down. The rest of the spawn's coming. Another face shift. Delay more time. Now in comes Ohio. The Gus back, silencing up. They have lost Mushy. Where's your hook shot out? Koro stun. KOXY battling up against S4. They're underneath the tower. KOXY is going to go down. And Ohio is isolated. The Kongs have split up Fnatic. Ohio is dead on top lane. Three heroes gone. And Secret trade nothing of value for it. They may even get more. The Rocker will give vision for S4 so we can get the Shadow Strike. This will slow down Shadow Demon. The TP is there. The scream damage isn't enough to actually pop him with the Orchid. The answer is no. He'll survive on 80 life points back in the base. Very nice analysis of the fight there from Secret. Just to see that they're ahead when they get this kind of jump. It's one of those really awkward situations where you run into each other with smoke and you may need to make the immediate reaction play. I think oh, Mushi coiling... Uh, they're chasing Johnny. Oh, yeah, Johnny is. Uh, he he, is. Very he good, came down actually. and picked up an invis room, but the puppy has a gem, so easily saw the enigma. I think he was coming in to try and deter them from going in for Roshan, steal the rune, and make him worry about it. But now puppy, all he's going to do is just recall in all of his friends, Zai being the last friend and they will take out Roshan. <laughs> Dry liners are just so disgusting when it comes to killing Roche. That's ridiculous. <laughs> So yeah, what I, what I was getting at in that, in that top fight, I think Mushi solo dream calling Zai lost the fight. Like, he cannot commit such an important ability just on the clockwork, especially when they can't even bring him down. Like, maybe if they get that kill off the bat and they play off that, perhaps, but Mushi was far ahead of his team and they didn't really have the combination play. Oh, top bottom lane, they're gonna go into S4. Ohio almost looked like he was baiting it out. S4, BKB will trigger, he's gonna die here. Good pick off. Mushy stayed in the trees and they aggressively TP'd Ohio into the lane, baiting S4 to try and have a crack at him. The dream call was the only thing that was going to stop S4 then. I think that's what he was searching for previously. The quick pick off, move to the next target. That was it. Same with the black hole in the mid lane. It's just the mindset of Fnatic in this game up against Secret. Take one kill, move it along. Nothing to see here. It's... It's a little bit easier when you get a two-on-one instead of a five-on-five. Five. Yes. That's, uh, yeah, that's that, one that, of those that's... kills that Fnatic, the moment he coils us forward, they know they've got him. Yeah. That's, that's what we call the backfire effect. 
Now, how close is Johnny to his BKB? He only has the Ogre Club, right? So, no, this is this is one of the changes that Enigma has been pretty hit. Uh, let me try that again. Enigma has been hit pretty hard by the by the changes to the jungle. When you look over the numbers, it doesn't look that significant. But you need to consider that it all adds up, right? You get less golden experience in the first camps, and because of that, you get the next camp slower as well. So his jungling impact is just not as high as it used to be. And you know, in in a previous version, Johnny would have had his BKB by now, but he's actually 3k short almost. So it's a pretty big deal. Um, it was bigger than I thought it was, but when you see it play out, you know, there's just uh, so much evidence that really shows that the jungle has been sacked hard. Secret's really forcing in this top lane, and they're doing it so well by just TPing out TZ down the bottom lane. He pushes out the creep wave, and then like, you've still got the Aghanim Scepter on Keeper of the Light, and he's a level, level 16 Keeper of the Light too. So correct me if I'm wrong, actually hasn't leveled up his ulti to level 3 yet. Uh, I, I don't think it's a misclick. I just I think he's got an around. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Now, now he's gotten around to it. But this means you basically got recall all the time for secret, bringing everybody back. Your split pushes, it, pretty much insane. Because you never have to have a TP scroll. You can keep the the, the two cores, like Queen of Pain as well as Dro Ranger, forcing in the other two lanes and keep the clockwork, the visage as well as Keeper of the Light all together. You need to be really careful though. If if they take damage during the recall, they're just stuck on the other side of the map. So mm -hmm. if you have the information, you could definitely play that way. But it's a very risky way to play with a Drow, where if Arteezy gets caught out, that can you know it can end up costing them the game trying to play a little bit too greedy with the split push. Now, he's going to get the Tier 1 for free. The Tier 2, it looks like Fnatic will fight for. And of course, worth to keep in mind that we just hit nighttime, so Puffy does not have the uh, 1800 unobstructed vision. I think Secret just wants to wait until day. Like, it's, it's just a safer and smarter play where they don't really lose any potential in the next three minutes, I think, unless how long is left in that Aegis. All right, they actually lose the Aegis. That's a hard call. It, it kind of feels like... Use that, I it feels like it's still worth it to go. It could backfire so hard, though, if you go in without vision on this tower. <laughs> it could. That and, is and really And they're not, not going to get up far enough to actually see either, but you've got Familiar Burst to scout out. They can move up through the tree line, be it on the, on the east flank or the west flank. They can go from either side. And with a continuous Illuminous spam, you're going to push into the tower. The Aegis on Arteezy, leave them on the front lines. If they initiate in, you just Blinding Light, S4 BKBs, jumps in. Zai's got a hookshot as well. You can bring support to the front lines very, very quickly, but... Why take the risk? The TP will come back from Arteezy. He'll defend the top tower. In fact, he'll probably even deny the top tower and then just get recalled. Yeah, Mushi making the right play here, just putting pressure elsewhere on the map. He knows he has a tier, tier 2 tower support in on, and since he will be the only TP, he will be there in time. So even though that tower gets denied, it's still worth it because it stops Secret's push. It probably makes them not able to use their Aegis, which I think is the biggest deal. And all in all, Fnatic, they're buying time again. Did Johnny really not... He is still really not progressing toward his uh, BKB. You just, you know, you think back at just one version of Dota. You would never see Enigma second to last. Absolutely yep. never. But now he's overtaken by both of Secret supports. And it's just... Um, it feels like he's sacrificing himself, though. It's not just the fact that he's not farming. It's the, it's the fact that he's having to sit behind the rest of his fanatic heroes each time, thinking maybe there's a team fight coming, because you've got four players from Secret in one lane, and they're fairly certain of the same thing. It's so like, okay, let's have the Enigma there. In case they get initiated on, then we can counter-initiate with the Black Hole, and we can do some work. He's still got 160 CS, though. Like, it's not like he's completely starved for farm on the Enigma. It's, it's not high up the list, though. It's like, actually the third on the third list. It's third last. Which is pretty impressive, but... Oh, that Dro Ranger is number one. The track right behind him. Mm. And what does KYXY go for? Is this... He's getting an Axe? Or is that an Octarine? It's got to be Octarine. It should be Octarine. I'm not sure if that's the best choice, actually, here. Um, in some ways, you really need BKB. Against Mono League, even. That's like the biggest reason to get it. Tri oh, there's triple bird stuns, there's multiple silences, like the Orchid, the Gust, and just, uh, I think that Mono League's actually gonna be his biggest problem in this game. He will have to find a way to play around that. Unless Raku's not mobile, really loses a lot of potential. It might also just be a casual point booster for now, because he's still walking around with 2,000 gold. That's just a weird build I, I don't know if he's going to go for, like, BTs as his next item. Maybe that's one way where they can try and counter the split push, which is coming out from Secret. Oh, wow, Koro. Right. He actually bought a full Desolator. He's pretty rich. Yep.
this this Visage has some good cash. And the gold graph keeps going up for Secret. They're not really that far ahead. Like, it's really close. I've just got this feeling that when you look at how the gold is distributed, it does favor Secret in the long run. They have the farm supports. The cores will still be able to match that the farm of Fnatic down the line, mm -hmm. but it's going to be very difficult for the Shadow Fiend to catch up to the 6,000 he's behind the Keeper of the Light right now. Now daytime will kick in. I think Secret's plan now is, if possible, get Roshan during daytime uh, with Coddle's 1800 vision from the Ags. And if they're unlucky with the spawn, they at least want to try to control the area. Or maybe not. They might have another plan as it looks. They're bringing in a break effect. Yeah, they're just going to go right now. Like, why wait? They have it. They have the Shadow Blade on the Drone Ranger, which is actually back in the stash and not on him right now. The hookshot oh. misses. The Zanus will be on SC, but if they only lose the SC here, Fnatic will be very happy with this. That's a five-man smoke. They'll end up killing off the Shadow Demon. But the Creep Wave is kind of cut halfway through, so they're not ready to attack into the Tier 2 tower just yet. So if Fnatic want to buy back, so they can't. The SD doesn't have buyback money. This is not just a Shadow Blade, by the way, for TZ. It's, it's, a, it's the Silver Edge up against up against the Bristle. Yeah, so he's going to disassemble his Sanjin Yasha and make a Silver Edge and a Yasha. This very, very powerful build-up for Drown nowadays. In this kind of game, they're going to concede this tower. That's, just look at that. Yep. There is no way they hold that. If, if they try, they die. But Ohio is still looking very, very good with his BKB. Like, you're going to focus in with the break, but you got the BKB, the, the Crimson Guard, the Assault Curas, and... I'm not going to say soon the Abyssal, because he did delay the Abyssal Blade to pick up that BKB. Believe but the, me. But the survivability on the Bristle is good. If he gets broken, <laughs> you won't even think it's that hero he's playing. Like, the physical damage on the Radiant is so disgusting that even though he has 29 armor, when the break kicks in, you, you might get a chance oh, to see it here. Here they go. Where's that break? There's the break. BKB will trigger, tries to TP out. The damage, it is not enough. That was without... Was that with or without the Silver Edge on? Because I can't remember the interaction. It's, well, I think when you pop BKB after you get broken, it removes it, right? It's the same interaction as Overgrowth. So it's like, who casts it first? I uh, do think I'm so. I'm not answering mechanical questions. I, I, <laughs> but it's a little confusing with Silver Edge, because it might be one of the parts goes through, maybe the damage reduction, or the break, or both. I can't remember. But that, act, to me, that looked like he wasn't broken when he BKB'd. Yeah. They, 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 his, they, his, ba his back was turned, he looked fine. Regardless, Secret made a point there. They dealt 2,000 damage to a 29 armor bristleback within three seconds. Yeah. But they did commit pretty heavily. Like, that was a lot of heroes coming in. And they're all working around with this bonus 79 damage from the Drow Ranger on every hero apart from the Clockwork. So you start adding all of this up up against, up against his life. 2,400 doesn't really look like that great a number. But when you can focus one-on-one, -on -one, that's fine. When you are, start adding in the control factors, so maybe that's, that really is, again, like you said it probably 20 minutes ago, what do you do in this game if you are secret? You've got to play around the control factors of Fnatic. Yeah, which means you've got to be careful of these Yule Scepters. You've got to be careful of these of these BKB Magic Immune pen Penetrating Disables like, well, Puck's Dream Coil, as well as Black Hole. And they actually get a Blink Dagger on the... He actually... Okay, cool. He buys a Blink Dagger on the Bristleback. I think it's good. What's, what's the purpose of it then? Go on Drow. <laughs> That's a good purpose. That is. The mission is very clear here for Ohio. <laughs> he just saw how much damage Secret dealt to him when Drow's marksmanship was on. He's not going to let it happen again. He has to jump the Drow to remove all of that agility. Mm -hmm. And of course, if he can actually shut her down, like the. I'm wondering if he even wins a one-on-one -on -one with Arteezy in melee range. I'm not sure because of the evasion on the Drow right now. Uh, with Butterfly, he probably won't reliably be able to get the bashes he needs. Mm -hmm. So it's probably pretty close, but that's still really good because it allows KYXY to do way more. There's a BKB. Good. That's a good choice. That's what I was so what I was hoping for from him. I think it's, it's necessary. Absolutely. So it was the casual point booster. I think he just changed his mind. I don't think he got it as a casual point booster. I think he was going for an Octarine and he was like, all right, this is not good. Yep. But he obviously doesn't want to sell it since he can use it later. Well, Fnatic with their new, newly found items, they're going to move out, see if they can find an engagement. Uh, they do have that BKB we're talking about. Roshan, the big man, is up and running, but Puppy actually breaks the smoke over on the SD, and Ohio instantly blinks to the high ground. Doesn't find anybody here. It also doesn't reveal the fact that he has this blink dagger. Because Secret have actually Secret do have vision with the Radiant War, but they don't see where Fnatic is moving. KOXY is still under the cover of smoke. And they're drawing the line to go back down through the bot lane. They can see Roshan, the Dai Courier is watching it very closely. 
but they're going to find S4 in a moment if they keep moving into the trees. And they'll see the Illuminate also come out from the Dire Jungle, so they're really guessing, Fnatic, which way they're meant to attack. But they're trying to wait for the Creep Wave to pass, so the Fog of War is still restricting vision on them. But they're walking past the Observer Ward. They're perfectly visible. The three familiars just sitting there waiting. As KOX, why? Well, he actually lost the vision, so we can't attack up the hill for him. They'll run away, can't even bring down one of them. But on bottom lane, S4's are attacking into the tier 3 tower. They're forced to TP back one, and it's Mushy, orking it up. He still wants to have a crack, actually. You'll set bring over on the Queen of Pain, and then we'll move himself away. And Fnatic are basically in recovery mode. Seeker are outplaying them right now on their map movements. They're taking a lot of advantage of the Keeper of the Light. They feel confident going for these split push plays with S4. And Here's the ultimately, time. they take the tier two top, they force TP's bottom, they lose nothing, and they are now in position for their next objective. Can they take it though? Fnatic are moving out. AOXY as well as uh, yes, Kurt Kicks, they're going to try and get rid of him. There's your orchid down and okay. Well, that oh. Roshan was alive at one point of his life. Solar Crest, Desolator, <laughs> Drowl, and Birds. You do get your item you're searching for. The BKB is over on the Enigma now. Yeah, so they, they, they have, really they have only well. the hook shot that will actually cancel his black hole. That's the only thing that Secret has. And the biggest play here is the surprise play. Oh, they down one. They've got Puppy with a silence. Four staff down. S4's coming in. Orchid's over on Mushy. He doesn't want to use the Yorsa to just sit but higher. Turns on the BKB. Fizz is attacking on the first hit bash. Puppy's down for the count. He'll move over to RTZ. And there's your black hole for the whole shot. Puppy from side. The Dream Caller causing serious problems for him. KOH by can't do enough damage. Mushy trying to kill off Koro. Finally, there is over buyback. RTZ in the trees trying to get out of here, but he can't do it. The Aegis will trigger the Zyke. Maybe he can make some space. Hook shots after Mushy. S4's gonna go with him. They have the face shift. Can Mushy get himself out of this one? There's your silence. Mushy, he's down for the count. It's a double kill for Arteezy. Coming back to life again. And maybe with these two heroes down, there is buyback for the puck. They can do some damage to the base. That instant hook shot from Zai really saved that fight. If he is not on point with that, they can run over. But immediately counterplaying the Enigma, I was about to say the big play here is to get the hook shot onto someone else and then you can find the black hole. But Johnny, I don't blame him for going for that. That looked like a really good opening, but Zai was just ready for him instantly. At Ohio, copying Illuminus, Mana Leak, the Dro Aura was turned on, the Rogue Rax is toast, <laughs> and the Melee Rax is toast as well. Johnny blinks forward, but the damage is done. Maybe they can catch up to him. Arteezy running out here. Ohio has no true vision, so he didn't see the movement away. In fact, he won't really see anything. Even the recall from Coddle is pulling everyone back. Arteezy had to save you. They just took racks for, what, two kills? Yeah, they lost their Aegis, though. <laughs> so, oh, BKB. Yeah, it's S4. He's going to go down to Ohio. Good damage from him. And a really good kill. That's a lot of money. That's actually a crap ton of money. This Blink Dagger has been really good for Ohio. And the best thing for him is it's going to send up Blink Abyssal. It's yep. going to be very powerful as they do catch Johnny, though, on the yeah. bottom lane. But Arteezy's in a little bit of trouble, too. He walked into the three line. Is again, going to get recalled. But Zai, oh, well, pulled back out again. They couldn't get the damage onto Arteezy to stop the recall. This is a very close game, even though it's Secret or 10k ahead, it still doesn't feel like they're in the clear just yet, but they took a really big fight there. Now, they won't have Aegis for the next at least five minutes until Roshan responds, and I think that's where Fnatic, if they find a fight like the one they just did, they would win that. They only lost that fight because of the Aegis. Even with a perfect hookshot from Zai, they would still lost that. See, I'm wondering if they can once RT finishes his full Satanic, which he's, he's only, what, 13, 1400 gold away from completing. I still think Bristle beats him in a fist fight. I'm, I was surprised with how hard Ohio destroyed him in that fight. Even with Arteezy's evasion, he still got shut down pretty heavily, so I'm going to say when there's an Abyssal out on Ohio, even if, let's say, Arteezy fights back, he's not going to win in the long run, so he's going to need help. And that means Ohio will not only shut out Arteezy, he will force the fight in a direction that's going to give a lot more time and space for the Lashrak, so I really think Ohio's best decision in this game so far was to buy that blink, and I think the second best one he's going to make is to buy the Abyssal over having buyback. I think he has to make that play. Well, in 300 gold, you'll get your answer. Because that's how far away he is from it. And Mushy, he's actually going to go for the Disable, so the Scythe of Vice will belong to him. So not looking too shabby for his items. Arteezy, I still want to see when he spends his money. 4,000 gold now on the Drogue Ranger. Could buy the full Satanic if he wishes to. But that's only if he wishes to. That will actually sacrifice his buyback. 
and Korea's already making the track for it. The really powerful thing about having buyback on Drow this game is that you can die and get recalled after buyback. So you don't even need the boots of travel as long as Puppy is safe. Uh, but he might still go for the buy. As you said, the courier is moving. But he didn't buy the recipe. This makes it's me the think... Reva. Oh, okay. He bought he the Reva. just didn't buy the recipe. He actually only needs 280 gold to have buyback. It's possible. So technically, wait. he just farms up the Ancients, and he's got buyback available too. So he, he doesn't just have to put... <laughs> Okay, well... <laughs> Caution to the win, Arteezy is Arteezy. It seemed a little weird to buy the Reaver if you wanted to save, because he doesn't replace it with any item anyway in well, his inventory. There's your wish for Ohio. The full Abyssal Blade has been purchased. He is really strong right now. That That is the, the single hero and player I've been most impressed with in this game because of how destroyed he got in lane and how many cases I've seen this offlane bristle just not working. Ohio has proven this game that you can definitely still pull it off. I am very, very impressed. Arteezy about to try and pull something off on KOSY. Doesn't break anything, but just to still attacks him. Mushy blinks four. Starts off with a hex on Arteezy. No fall off. And in fact, all of Fnatic have left their base. Hook shot up. They caught out Mushy with the cogs pushing him back. He's got face available. Gonna use up the first, allowing for the blink dagger timing. Up he comes to the high ground. While on bottom lane, the force is still coming in with a creep wave. Pushing it in. Ohio's BKB is protecting him, but he's out of mana. KOSY being mana not also helping him out. No one's there from Fnatic, but then again, maybe they don't need to be. The Rack is getting whittled away by the rest of Secret. They just took bottom racks without killing a single Fnatic player that could just rotate towards the top lane as well because the Creek Wave's already in and that's exactly what's happening. Yeah, that's split push play once again from S4. Just He's doing so much damage because of the Drower and his carry. Triple jump, the Abyssal Blade, it hits on S4 and then the Black Hole catching it on the hook on it. It doesn't stop Johnny, however, but the Corks pushing all Fnatic back. Is there time? Is there a kill? The Corks fall back into the game, but Arteezy says it's going up against Ohio. They managed to reach up to him, so the damage is gone. Double silence. The same top of the drone range, but Mushy still taking so much now with the Sun Ohio. He's with the whole shot! Side back in again, pushing him out. k Ways wipe dying the familiars. Is this it? Johnny's in trouble. Soul Sunch will kill him. That's it. Triple kill for Koro. Puck, the old one alive, and he is on the wrong side of the world. He has gone west where the sky is blue, and it is cloudy and day. GG, in fact, in the Fnatic base. Secret take game number one up against Fnatic. One step close to the semi finals. But what a game from Fnatic as well. I know you want to say, man, the Bristleback. Great play by Ohio. That was such a good strategic win for Secret. I, I think they, the way they outplayed Fnatic in this game was simply just map movements and split pushing, taking advantage of Keeper of the Light, taking advantage.